Okay, we've got a lot of stuff to go over when it comes to the Vancouver Canucks and this update on one particular forward. But before we go over to that, I wanted to bring your attention to some more local stuff going on here. As some of you might have known, Troy Stetcher and the TS-51 Foundation had three open to the public practices at Mineru Arenas in Richmond the past three days. This was a great opportunity for public viewers to go out there and watch different NHL athletes from across the league, some AHL athletes to practice and get into the groove of the season. I visited two days because, you know, the Richmond Sockeyes play at Mineru Arenas. I used to commentate for their team, so Mineru is like a second home to me. But a bunch of other people around the Lower Mainland ended up tuning in as well. Different NHLers like JT Miller, Tanner Pearson, Thatcher Demko were all there, plus a bunch of other guys from the area. Of course, Troy Stetcher, because he is from Richmond, Bowen Byram, Danton Heinen, Ty Smith, Martin Jones, a bunch of other guys were here. It was awesome to watch, and it had some pretty good sessions at the end. I had a few pictures taken, actually, with Pearson, with Stetcher, with Lucic, Gallagher, and Laurent Brassois, Stanley Cup winning goaltender over there. So it was a pretty cool time, and I think a lot of people who were in the area and who were able to experience had a great time as well. So I just wanted to turn my attention to that. Obviously, Troy Stetcher is going out there doing this for the Diabetes Canada support. And if you know the backstory, you would know that Troy Stetcher's father unfortunately passed away due to complications with diabetes. So this camp, the fundraising, the donations, it's all for a great cause. And it provided fans in the area with some awesome entertainment as well. Putting aside the tremendous experience that I and many others had at Mineru Arenas the past few days, though, today we have ourselves an update going over Canucks forward Andre Kuzmenko, because you had yourselves his agent Dan Milstein make an appearance on the Sakaris and Price show. Now, we have the link in the description to the audio if you want to go out there and listen to this. It's on sakarisandprice.com. It's the August 29th interview from two days ago, and Dan Milstein's interview starts at 36.30 of the broadcast, but we also had Electric Nux on the R Canucks subreddit who went out there and transcribed what it was that Mailstein went out there and said. So, big shout out over to Sakaris and Price for having Milstein on the show. Big shout out to Electric Nux for transcribing the comments. What I wanted to do was leave a link in the description as well to the written form of what was said because it's easier to screenshot and put it on the screen here. Let's talk today about Andre Kuzmenko and how his summer has gone. This is what Dan Milstein has to say. This summer, Kuzmenko wanted to be in the best shape of his life, and it was a challenge for them to set his training up in Bali. He had a trainer for the month of June, another one in July, and then has to come to the U.S. Right now, he is in Miami training with the Florida Panthers guys, using their facilities now. Okay, now pause. Firstly, Kuzmenko in Bali, that was something that we had seen. We saw all the videos. We saw him running up the stairs. We saw him doing the workouts in the gym there. Very interesting off-season choice as to where to spend your workouts. But we saw Kuzmenko. We saw the videos. It's all there. But hearing now that he is in the U.S., he is in Miami with the Florida Panthers guys, sure, you could say that raises some eyebrows that could set off some alarms. What is our guy doing in Florida? Why is he there? This might just be more so of a situation where it's like, hey, he just needs to practice anywhere, and he happens to be in the Miami area, so why not use what's available to you right away? It is intriguing, though, knowing that he is literally in a position where it's another NHL team's home, but I guess you could say the same thing with other players, like, for example, the guys in Mineru Arenas yesterday with all the other NHLers. Like, it happens sometimes. You have, like, the Hugheses and the Caulfields and the other Americans practicing in Michigan. You have Kuzmenko practicing, or not practicing, but training and working out in Florida. This isn't really that big of a deal, although it is interesting to hear. The Canucks, though, were not happy when they heard Kuzmenko was going to be training in Bali. Milstein said they heard from the head coach, from everybody, everyone was concerned. In June, Kuzmenko was training with Pavel Datsuk's summer coach. They actually found ice in Bali, so he was skating too. Milstein then talks about the differences between getting ready for the KHL season and getting ready for an NHL season, and said that Kuzmenko was not ready last year. They were a bit concerned after seeing him at camp last year. Now, that's really interesting. Because when it comes to the Canucks not liking that Kuzmenko was in Bali, firstly, you could understand why. Like, obviously, the guy went to Dubai at the beginning of the summer. We saw the pictures of him 
what was it like water surfing while he was on the thing like it was interesting seeing Kuzmenko's summer unfold in front of our eyes on social media but hearing that he was going to Bali specifically to vacation and to train that obviously is really weird so the Canucks inserting themselves and saying that they are not comfortable with that yeah okay that makes a lot of sense but it is good, though, that Kuzmenko was able to get the ice that he needed to skate and also do training regiments that were necessary, too. But I also think it's intriguing how the article notes that Kuzmenko was not NHL fitness level ready last year. We all remember last year's preseason, where Kuzmenko showed off that he actually was an NHL talent who could play at this level, who had some fancy dangles, and who could score goals. And the season went pretty well for the guy. 39 goals and 74 points. Obviously, you want to see improvements, but that's already an extraordinarily high ceiling to match. And so hearing that Kuzmenko has more to give, how the Canucks thought he actually could be better fitness-wise, this makes things look super intriguing coming into next season. And Milstein said himself that, hey, this summer, Kuzmenko has changed some things, so the Canucks expect a new and improved Kuzi coming into this season. Look at his half-naked pictures on Instagram. He looks great. The best shape of his life. And yeah, the pictures look pretty good, not gonna lie. Milstein says that he expects big things from Kuzmenko and from the Canucks in general this season. He's really excited. He also talked about living in Vancouver and how Kuzmenko likes it. The new thing in Russia and Belarus is sushi, so there's no better place in the NHL world than living in Vancouver. Clearly, the best thing is not the taxes. The fans are also sometimes crazy, including Rick Dollywall. Milstein talked about Vancouver being a great place to live. He says that Mikheyev had 15 to 20 teams calling last year, and he chose Vancouver. Kuzmenko had 32 teams to choose from, and he chose Vancouver. Now, there's more in this Reddit piece talking about Mikheyev and Danila Klimovich, but I pretty much wanted to talk about Kuzmenko here, mostly because when it comes to how his season went last year, I think more people can agree that, yeah, sure, you could say it might have been a flash in the pan. Sure, you could say he might not score 39 goals again because his shooting percentage was astronomically high, but... This was a guy that was an NHL talent. He had the dangles, he had the shot, he had the offensive IQ, he always put himself in a great position, and he made a difference out there. Sure, he's not the most physical guy, he's not the best defensive guy, he's not even the fastest guy, but when it comes to controlling the offensive zone, making great passes, being aware of where your teammates are, and putting your stick at the right place at the right time to get tap-in goals, Kuzmenko was doing that extraordinarily well. So, heading into next season, if you're realistically expecting him to have a much stronger physique, then you kind of get me excited as to wondering where things can go next. Of course, we know Elias Pettersson is going out there and improving his body, his training, his workouts, and hopefully he'll be able to best his career high of 102 points next year, but Kuzmenko should be right there. I feel like for a lot of people, there are unrealistically high standards because Kuzmenko had this godlike shooting percentage last year, so everybody is expecting this inevitable decline. Oh yeah, he was so productive last year, there's no way he does that again, right? But if he is just straight up a better athlete than he was a year ago, who knows what the ceiling could be? Who knows what the ceiling could be when you know he's already the first line guy to play with PD? When you know that he is going to be the number one power play tap-in, crease-crasher type of guy. This is not a player that had those same guarantees last year heading into the season. It took a few preseason games and eventually the start of the regular season to really acknowledge, hey, this guy is really talented. Like, he can actually score. It's not just Bo, JT, and Petey now. You have Kuzi, too. Of course, there are some other conversations we could have based off of this update, but just hearing the words from Milstein himself... It's cool knowing that Kuzmenko was able to get his training done despite the Canucks not liking it being held in Bali. It's weird how he's in Florida now, but that's okay because you got a lot of other NHLers that are spread out in different organizations and facilities. But when it comes to Kuzmenko's overall progress, it very much seems like, based off of what we've heard, based off of Rick Tockett's emphasis on off-season fitness to help you into next season, that Andre Kuzmenko could very well be better for next year. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Kuzmenko, the update we had had, and Milstein's comments. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishra Shrolls 99, and bye. <laughs>